Yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. All right, before we get started, we're going to pray and uh, welcome the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for this vision that Maya has that, that vision that Maya has, the vision that you've given Maya, Lord God, we ask, Lord God, this, this vision, Lord God, be filled with your purpose, Lord God. Now on today, Lord God, allow this vision to be shared with your people, Lord God. And we ask Lord, that you bless this opportunity, bless this blab, Lord God, and the words that have been spoken, Lord God, may be edifying unto your body, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And yes, it is a vision of a project on behalf of kingdom building but today's blog is also about the vision yes, yes and how visions come about what makes a vision a vision and how do we know that if this vision is really appointed upon us from god that it really comes from above uh, one of the incredible things about the United States and having arrived here, the, that the song of the amazing grace has an entirely different feel to it living in this country than it is outside of this country. And just the fact that it is an American sailor sings it, it, it to me it is Actually, the vision of the entire coming about this country is founded in the song of the Amazing Grace. It was not founded by kings. This country was not created by um, a system. This country was created by people who saw a shared and common vision. The simple people who have get, had enough of the historical structure of Europe coming to America. And even though they did not know it, they didn't compare stories. They believed in the same vision of freedom. And why is that? Why is that that so many millions of people, when you mention the word freedom, something happens to them and they think of just exactly that one single thing. We all imagine freedom exactly the same way and makes us feel the same way too. The Amazing Grace song is actually founded on the story of a sailor who was blind and regaining his God-given vision on the day when he believed. The first day he believed, suggesting that he has he had no experience of God, but he really had no vision for his life either until he discovered God. Regaining his vision gave him purpose and filled him with gratitude for who gave him that vision. Um, the Amazing Grace is perfectly well titled. That title is just monumental significance about what God's vision is for human beings. He has given us his grace. And that in itself, the concept of grace is a vision for humans where to walk and in what direction. It's an inspiration. The more you study his word, the Bible, the more you recognize how actually God defines grace and why he put grace into our life. The opposite of grace is curse and the opposite of vision is blindness. And before we go any further, I would like us to pay attention to those two concepts first. Yes, Curtis, you wanted to say something. No, no, I'm just saying amen and just listening. It's good stuff. Just listening. So. <laughs> um, yes, I would like to start out taking a first a close look at blindness. 
that is the opposite of vision and right. sight. And of course, that is the opposite of blessings and grace. Um, I have made a little note for myself this morning about anything that has occurred to me that defines or embraces the concept of blindness. Number one is sightless. We know about physical blindness, physical sightlessness, but it also refers to things that are not um, physical nature. Right. The unquestioned faith, we call it blind faith. The unbeliever, just like in the, in the song of Amazing Grace, the unbeliever, we consider them blind. And a form of blindness is to be uninformed. A form of blindness is to be prejudiced hmm. or to wing certain projects and actions improvised. You do, it, it's a blind action. Now, it doesn't mean that it always turns out to be mishit. It can be a very well-inspired result, but it's improvised. You set out to perform the action in the blind. We refer to unpreparedness. We refer to inexperience. We refer to unreasonable being unreasonable. We refer to unevidential as blindness. And the one that stumbles the blind biblically has to be more blind than the blind. And the one that who uses the blindness of others for gain or advantage by the Bible is defined as spiritually blind. So we starting from there, how would we actually, I would like to actually bring in the Bible here. And I think that's going to be for today for introduction. I would like us to discuss two different um, quotes from the Bible. And then, um, um, Curtis, you can help me to put them on screen, if that's possible. Deuteronomy 27, 18 to 19. And Deuteronomy 28 to 20, Deuteronomy 28, 28 to 29. I'm sorry, what was the first set of um, scriptures, Deuteronomy, the first set? Yes. Deuteronomy 27, 18 to 19. So Deuteronomy 27, verse 18. Through 19. Yes, those gotcha. two verses. Okay. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. I wanted to mention this um, verse because I recognize it as the ultimate, one of the two examples in the Bible that I, I, would, I could uh, really honestly define as ultimate spiritual blindness. This is, this is the man who is being cursed because he stop, makes the blind stumble and he uses the other people's blindness for his advantage. And this is one of the verses, one of the scriptures we're going to discuss today in our conversation. 
And the other one is going to be Deuteronomy 28, 28 to 29. And that would be Twenty-eight, twenty-eight to twenty-nine, and this would be another example of what I could define as ultimate spiritual blindness. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. This is an example of when somebody is cursed with blindness and cursed, cursed because they are blind, but God does not curse with blindness. Otherwise, he would have not cursed the ones who make the blind stumble. But, but he, he says that if you are spiritual blind, you will not prosper. And that's, that's the part of is that the double curse. And I believe that I am right now going to open up for conversation I have some inputs and thoughts on these two scriptures, but I would like to see if anybody else right. has any comments before I, I begin right, right. with that one. I, I think it's interesting uh, we talk about the, the vision and the blindness because um, um, as it relates to a natural blindness, um, uh, you obviously, naturally, you can't see, and physically, you can't see. And you may be aware of certain things, but you can't see to uh, uh, carry out that, to carry out what you see. Mm -hmm. But with the spiritual blindness, it's not only, it's not only um, through a loss of your spiritual connections, again, uh, uh, on a much deeper level, it's also a loss of the mobility of the hands, if you will. You can't even put it together. You can't see it, nor can you put it together. Wow. You know, you, you understand what I'm saying? Is it, is it something that you know about blind people that they can put hand, their hands together? Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying they, they can't they can't work that thing out. They can't put that vision together. Again, uh, a blind person, maybe a blind person physically can't see, mm -hmm. but he or she or the individual is able to work with their hands to complete t different tasks with their hands, given the given the fact that they're shown how to do it. But the spiritual blindness, it leads not only to a spiritual blindness, meaning that you can't see spiritually, but it also leads in a place where you can't even you, you can't you can't use your hands to build what you can't see. I see what you mean. So that with natural blindness, you can be taught to use your right, right. Your, fun, your other functions yes, to yes. Fix blindness. Exactly. But exactly. With spiritual blindness. There are no functions to Absolutely. use into in order to um, compensate for spiritual blindness. Exactly. 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 That's, that's kind of a wonderful insight. I yeah. haven't thought of that before, but that is yeah, like great. It's really. And, Habakkuk in the Bible says, and I may not, uh, that I've always pronounced it Habakkuk, but it could be pronounced differently. Habakkuk. But Okay, Habakkuk, yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. So Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, God reminds us to write the vision. It says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables. Wow. That he may, that he may run, that he may run that readeth. So it's important that we, it's important that that one that God gives us the vision. It's kind of what we were talking about earlier. Uh, God gives us the vision, and that vision needs to be wrote down or written so that men. Who, I, and it's not the vision is not just for us, just mm -hmm. for, for my personal goal, but the vision is for God's people. So that vision is carried by carried out by many other people. Again. The vision also, like you were saying, the spiritual blindness that but for those who don't 
for those who are spiritually blind, they cannot carry out God's vision, at least with the right heart. They perceive God's vision. That's, that's the Absolutely. stumbling block Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, and that, is, that is so incredible there because one of, one of the characteristics that I have learned again from Bible study right. of receiving a vision from heaven yes. is that that it is always in service to others. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And and, and the, the vision in itself, you know, which uh, Habakkuk was talking about, the vision in itself, it include it, it's too big for one person. So in fact, it does include the service and the skills that, that God has blessed man with to be a part of this vision and help build this, absolutely. But, but there is there is a, there is a, a hidden little stumbling block again, because mm-hmm. Satan can use this so easily. Yeah, absolutely. To others, and what is service to others? I'm helping them to make money. Mm-hmm. But but there is an important thing to call into under judgment here. Mm-hmm. I use helping others to serve their own selfishness, or are you helping others in their need? Right, right, right. And the need, and because if you, if all, all you do service to others is serving other people's selfishness, then you are back to square one. You are just as well would be right. serving your own selfishness. Right. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that that's that's very interesting, and, and that's why it's so important to. Uh, that's why it's so important to have the right relationship uh, with God, and that you are in fact hearing from Him, uh, because whether we want to. Uh, you know, some people understand it or some people don't. But the fact is that there are forces in the earth. You know, there are different things. Uh, you know, Satan doesn't have the doesn't have the same vision as God would have. You know. Um, oh, absolutely not. He cannot even have a vision. Right, right, right. He, he just ruining what God and Jesus are doing. Right, just, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of, one, of, one of the characteristics of um, um, where which source is an inspiration coming right, from? Right, that absolutely. What vision is it feeding absolutely. into? Absolutely. Is it feeding into the principles of heaven? And then we will learn about what those principles are right, through right. the Bible. Yeah. But it is ultimately always service to others. Yeah. Or is it going to feed into a source that is only concerned about individual self? Right. Right, exactly, exactly, and that that is that is a, a major difference. That is a major difference. But I guess a, even a bigger question is that why would someone want to stop someone from putting together a home or some kind of facility to help other people? Why why would there be uh, a obstacle in a way of putting together a facility and helping other people to either get jobs or to help? Uh, you know, people in different levels, different areas of our lives, because, you know, we're all in situations from time to time, but why would there be opposition? But in effect, there is opposition in this world. You would think that it would be smooth sailing, but someone wants it and another person doesn't want it. Well, there is two things. There are, um, as far as I come, and I only know it in Hawaiian context, really, that much of the humanitarian things, you can serve people here in so many ways. Right, right. And some of them are regulated, right. especially regulated in order to protect the people who will receive right. the service. Right. But also because there are other community surroundings that are concerned and their needs and their rights needs to be respected as well as otherwise right. more people going to end up on the streets. Right, right. But, but the, those regulations are in place for a reason. So right now I wouldn't be able to answer why somebody would want to stop a home right, build. Right. Right, it's right. only individual it has to be looked right. at. But the right. question is that the motivation behind it, right. what are you protecting Absolutely. and what is your vision? Absolutely. Well, and, and that, that was just my point, Maya, in regards to that one, God is for, you know, again, we were uh, just reading Habakkuk 2 and 2, how God instructs Habakkuk to write the vision and make it plain and, and that other men could read it and we can move forward. So we could, so we're all on the same page. Again, that's awesome. But my point of that, which I just said, is that how would someone, why would someone want to come against that? 
of God's vision or, or helping other people, in which his vision includes everyone to be a part of it and to uh, you build this, you put the pillars up and I'll put this, I'll paint the walls and whatever the case might be, you know, everyone has a, some kind of task, but there are forces in this earth that would say, no, why would I want to do that? Why help other people? But in the same- That is the ego. And what you are actually really looking for here mm -hmm. is what kind of, what kind of um, inspiration, what kind of right. emotion, what right. kind of ego manifestation did did did, did 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 satan inspire that person for right, um, right. what and that is the form of blindness it's right. a very absolutely good, absolutely yeah, a very good question to ask because you can't address a form of blindness no. until you investigated and named it right absolutely absolutely kind of goes back to but, our conversation earlier you can, you can find the demon behind it and yeah. you can call it up on its name and yes. it, and demand it to leave Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, and it's it's so interesting because without a vision, you know, even the Bible says without a vision, the people perish, the people perish without a vision. And so it wasn't necessarily talking about a, a physical sight, which obviously physical sight is wonderful. We, you know, it's good to have, absolutely. But more importantly, it was talking about a spiritual blindness without a relationship, which God feeds that relationship, where there's a, the intimacy, you know, there's back and forth. Anybody who has a relationship with God will immediately receive a vision. Absolutely. That's one of, the, one, it's almost like an initiation into a new relationship with God. Yes, absolutely. You receive a vision for your life, you yeah, receive absolutely. a vision for the heavenly kingdom. Absolutely. And vision, you receive a vision for, the entire humanity absolutely, absolutely. of actually re, re, regrouping right. in heaven. Right. And God shares his vision with you right away right. as soon as you are close right. to him. Right, absolutely. And the vision remind us, and you know, let us remind you know those who are listening, those who will listen to the replay, is that the vision will come in a way of an image. The vision right. will come in a way of an image. For some people, come it's verbally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, audibly, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and it will come, but you know, audibly, even even the words themselves, the words, the words that we speak create an image. Yes. So you can't have the word without an image. You can't have the image without a word. So. Hopefully you have both. <laughs> what's that? Hopefully you have both. If yeah, not, absolutely, it's absolutely. Eventually, both absolutely. Is eventually. Well, I mean, but but think about it now logically. If you have it audibly you have the image. Yes. And if you have the image, you have it also audibly. Isn't it interesting how the word paints? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And and so, so, you know, again, again, we are not to, the Bible reminds us that we're not, we're not to, to stricken ourselves with the image and say, this is so important, this is so important because even in the Corinthians, it says that what is to have the gifts but yet you have not loved. You know, what is it to have like the image of God and God wants me to do this and God wants me to do that. But in the end, you get this, you have this grandiose of a plan, but in the end you have not loved. The image is nothing. The vision is nothing. Because you're well, because because love and vision requires action. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. Me, we really, really need action takers. God even tells you, don't contemplate what you're going to speak. Just show up, open your mouth, yes. and I will speak through your mouth. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to yes, be my Holy yes. Spirit is going to make it happen. Yes, you just need yes, to show up. Yes, and yes. it's the same with the vision. Just show up every day for the vision. Just get started. You don't know what it's going to be. You start out in the blind. Yes, yes, yes. You start, but you go toward the light. That's what's so amazing about it. You yeah. can't have a vision if you haven't started the vision exactly the exactly exactly, exactly. And, and, it, it, and it truly is it truly is you, you you know we're talking about the word love here but it truly is love that feeds the vision love feeds the vision and that if you like you said if you take that step of faith and and trust god he will feed you along the way he will feed the vision the image he will uphold his image in front of you that you won't go a day without eating. And again, not necessarily in a, in a, in a physical stuff where we're eating food, but the word itself. 
because the word itself is what sustains us. The and that's the vision what I had when I started my business. I knew right. that my life needed reforming, but I got into online marketing in, in a month multi-level mm -hmm. marketing mm -hmm. and it, it took i thought oh i have this vision of creating a retreat mm -hmm. but on the marketing so i'm going to need to make money for it and it mm -hmm. sounds so good in multi-level marketing i'm going to make a lot of money really fast sure. and in, i'm going to finance my big vision of a retreat and guess mm -hmm. what the multi-level marketing created took so much time and so much energy and resources from me I've never been able to fuel my spiritual vision. But, and but, but, here, but here's the thing, though. But it taught me how to do, do work but, online. But, but here's the thing, though. It says to write the vision and make it plain. Let's write the vision, keep it simple for those like yourself, not only for yourself, but for me and others who you will share this vision with. Said, yes. So that those who will read it again, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain. Uh, make it plain upon tab tables or tablets that he may run that read it. Yes. So I, I have a blueprint I should share with you eventually. Exactly. But to, to, to speak to our audience is that. I did start it out thinking that I can split my spiritual vision from the the worldly vision because it's a necessity to make money. Right, right. And, and at some point, I really had enough. I said, I'm going to make projects that God wants to make projects. I'm going to merge right. it. I'm not willing to separate my my spiritual work from my worldly work. It will be one and the same. Right, right. Right. And, and and I'm sticking with that one because it is perfectly doable. Mm -hmm. It is possible to bring such a vision into realization. Right, right, right. Of working for the Lord. Because it is it is not like taking a church and materializing it. It right. is simply accepting um simply accepting that um this is how all businesses should be run. And, if they were kingdom businesses, that they would evangelize for the Lord and right. His project of the kingdom. And, and and Maya, what if it what if it was possible? What if it was just some crazy thought? Just a crazy thought. What if it was just what God says? Write the vision. What what if love was just the vision? What not not just love alone, but what if love was the vision? And in love, because God already knew in advance that through the systems in this world, be it, you know, be it the government and through its many different systems and and triangles and obstacles and different things, and just life, the the, the strategies that people have in place and uh, or the strategies that they don't have in place, the visions that people have and some visions or, or visions that people don't have. But what if all this was really about love, that God knew in the end that that life was going to be such so much of a pressure for just people, for me, for you, and for all those who are listening now and for, for those who will listen to the replay. What if God understood it well in advance that love was the most simplest form of just purity, just unconditional love, but yet through a perverse world and the schemes, the strategies, do this, 10 steps to this and all of this, and it works for someone else and it doesn't work for this person. All these different things or plans that we had. God said in the midst of all this, that someone was going to feel rejected. Someone was going to feel left out. People are going to commit suicide. And all these different things were, they were going to have their own different beliefs. But yet, all of this was about love. The vision was about love. And that through love, guess what? It created the job that we would need to do. It created the, 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 our, our, that, that, that gift, if you will. Because in love, we're taking care of each other. So you really are talking about one of the heavenly treasures, 
one of the evidences of how God manifests. Yes, yes, yes. In this world. And at the same time, you make that reward of the heavenly treasure of love into a, a vision itself. Right, 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 right. Now, what we said yesterday so aptly about love is that it it reveals everything that is not love. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's going to purge it, and it's going to bring it to the surface. Yes. And in this world, more than in any other world or universes, because it is a world where there is contrast, mm -hmm. it is more than more than anywhere else possible to purge oneself from anything that is not love. This absolutely. is. This is where we are turning into pure gems Amen. and jewels for his crown. It is already happening. Just because we look around and all we see is 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 the hellfire, really, the furnace fire. Right, right. right. It, it doesn't right. mean that we are not, if we are burning away the impurities, right, right. we are crystallizing. This is done with the most immense amount of love. Right. Turn us into what we were originally intended to be. Right, right, right. And, and and you know what? To add to what you're saying, Maya, is that if a person claims that they're love, you've got to go through the test. God claimed that He was love. He had to go through the test. And so many, Daniel and his four companions. A, a, amen. Absolutely, absolutely. And so in this life, many of us are staking claim to whether it be love whether it be a, uh, the best father, whether it be all these different titles, different things, names that we, we are staking claim to. But either way, you are going to be tested in your claim. And so to think that Christians aren't going through things or we're just like, oh, life is so wonderful. That is so far from the truth. The truth of the matter is that we are staking the same claim that Jesus is, that he is love. And we're accepting his love for our lives. And so with that being said, we, in fact, are being tested every single day, even by others who are calling themselves Christians. And I would like to really tie it into to the very beginning where we started. Yes. yes. So beautifully, the amazing grace with the spiritual blind, with physical blindness yes. that turned into spiritual vision. Yes. Of building a country of freedom, just soaking that feeling. Right. What if you, if you recognize that the the vision is replace it with the word love? Absolutely. God's gr love for us was His grace. That, that was that was God's vision. Praise Lord. Amen. God's God's vision for His people was is was and it still is love. Therefore. If we are at this point, we recognize that blindness, spiritual blindness, is really a lack of love. Absolutely. It's, and re it's when, resisting the, it's, re it's in fact resisting the love that God is so ready and willing to share with us. Well, resistance, resistance at least engages in with it and is, yeah. is, is pushing its way through. It's, it's like... Um, Jacob and the angel. Yes, wrestling. yes, yes. Wrestling, wrestling. Yes, but, yes. Yes, but 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 the blindness is like. Pfft. Yes, yes. There yes. is no wrestling. Absolutely. It, it, it's absence of wrestling, even. Right. Understandable. That that there is no that is no love in that one. But Jacob or anyone who is resisting is working through the impurities, working through right. the <laughs> what is not love. Because we have that in us, right. pushing through that toward love, and that—that that right. is the—that is the condition of a human being. Right. There is nothing new about that. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, so here, and here, and here's the here's the thing too to add is that it's interesting how in most of our lives, trouble, the just just life has attacked us. It's just different things in life has attacked and most of us when we've been young. Most of the disturbances or the, the obstacles that we ran into in life have been have taken place for most of us, many of us, when we were yeah. young. We, yeah. we, we, we are born into a, a, a world that is going to damage us in different Absolutely. Lives. But, but, but it doesn't mean that we were, the Bible says that we were born into sin. But mm -hmm. here's the thing. 
But we are not of sin. Exactly, exactly. And we're working our way, we're working our way back to love. And so in working our way back to love, guess what? We have picked up and these different things have these different things have happened to us in life. All the prove to all to say to us or prove to us to say, why are you doing that? Do you know that this thing that happened to you, that's not love. And we dump all those things on God and say, God didn't love me because these things happened to me. And in fact, amen, praise the Lord. And in fact, God does love us. And it's, yeah. it's, but we need to go to the cross and nail it there. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Nail everything that all those impurities or to lay it to yes, the... Yes, 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 yes. Um, unfortunately, my time is up for right, today. Right. Um, I have I have mentioned two para two verses, scriptures in the very beginning, and just um, with all this love, I would like to um, say that the first was about the man who makes the blind stumble is cursed. Yes, absolutely. And the second one is where the man is cursed because he's blind. Hmm. Very interesting. What a huge contrast. Contrast of yeah. God's um, definition of what blind mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is, if you replace it with love, then there is one whose naturally state is blindness. But the one who comes, instead of taking care of him, he makes him stumble. Um, that man was lacking. Yes, the law, yes, 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 and yes, therefore yes. God cursed him in Deuteronomy 17, Amen. the 27. The other one was when the man, um, man is already blind, but that is a spiritual blindness because he has no love inside him. Amen. So it really ties up, and he he is he said God says you're gonna be unprosperous. You will not prosper in your ways at all. And that you could call it a curse, but that is just a natural result right. of blindness and lack right. of love. Right. And I would have liked to just point that out here because this is unfortunately all that I can bring in here right. today. Right. And that it's, it's perfectly blends in what you brought in about love. Right. And it may, highlights both scriptures. And we're going to continue with that one uh, tomorrow as well. We're going to be on this topic of vision for a few days. And, and, and just to add this piece here, uh, Maya, love is expansive. Love includes everybody. Love, yeah. And, and so love wants to reach out. Love doesn't want to take. It wants to reach out. It wants to share because, in fact, it is love. But we also have to know the characteristics of God's love versus the characteristics of Satan's love or what, what his message of love is about. Uh, I was rather spend a little time on one of these well, love, how, how, how many ways Satan is actually cutting yeah. in to sabotage love. A absolutely, absolutely. And sabotage the vision yes, that yes. God and Jesus has yeah. set. And, and they're, they're the, the, the different manifestations of how Satan is copying the um, Tower of Babel and what right. happened. I mean, right. that's so much to say. Absolutely. And, and that's, you bring up a powerful point, but I know that you have to go. But uh, yeah, with those. I can continue. Please right, continue right. without me. What, I, what, no, no, I, I, have to, I have to make my way too. But guess what? We're going we're gonna to stay on the schedule. And we'll be here tomorrow at 2 30, at 6 30 uh, Central Time. And that's going to be uh, uh, 2 30 Hawaiian time. Is that uh, Pacific? Uh, it what is time? Hawaii, not the Pacific. No, Pacific. It's, okay. It's more so than Pacific. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, in the part, in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> okay, so well, it's Hawaiian time. How about that? Okay. Andaluvian time. <laughs> right. So it'll be six thirty Central Time. We'll be here tomorrow. Uh, uh, continuing on with a part two. Uh, we'll take this uh, part two because uh, my, in fact, uh, the host of the show, she has to cut it short uh, uh, because of uh, uh, conflicting schedule. But with that being said, that we will continue on tomorrow with a part two. So, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we thank you. And remember, God's love is the best love that you will ever have. So stay tuned on tomorrow at 6.30 Central Time. Thank you.